it's number 90. Yes, now you're there. Now I hear okay. you. Were you on mute? I get a mute because there's some background noise. So uh, if I'm not talking, don't worry I'm about mute. that. Here at, at the Four Corners Project Studio here in Beit Shemesh, Israel, anything goes. <laughs> As my fans know, my, oh, my fans know they're already ringing in. Um, first thing is, welcome everybody to Lenny Salman Live, show number 90. We're here in Beit Shemesh, Israel. Ah, oh, shout out to our associate producer, Judy Hertzfeld, coming in from Clifton, New Jersey. Um, oh, she's giving us a thumbs up, meaning sound is good, picture is good. Um, what do we got? If you're watching, everybody out there, if you're watching from Facebook, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you're watching from YouTube, either on Schlockrock or on the Four Corners channel, hit like and subscribe and leave a comment. And if you're watching on Twitter, at Lenny Solomon, retweet. Today is the 21st, tonight, right now, the 21st day of Adar. We are heading towards Pesach. We are heading towards Passover. Rami, can you believe that? Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And my friend, I got to introduce Rami Strasberg, one of the most amazing sax players to play with Schlock Rock. He, I call him Schlock Rock 3.0. As you know, we went through lots of incarnations because as the guys got older and became professional, we replaced them with the next guys growing up. And Rami is the third sax player. So we had Danny Block. Now, we're not counting our Cotty Kaufman, who played before Danny, but Danny Block is considered the first sax player. Now, Mark Infield, of course, subbed, but he is... Um, but Mark Infield is really a utility guy, he plays five in different instruments, and his main instrument was percussion and then backup keyboard more than sax, although he might have something to say about that. Um, and then after that, we had Mike Cohen on sax, and then finally, Rami Strasberg, you joined the band as the youngest band member ever to play with Schlock Rock at the age of 17 in November 19. 97 in st louis followed by another weekend in minneapolis everybody welcome ronnie strasberg to lenny solomon live thank you thank you great to be here len thank you for having me and it's great to be here now it's great to have you here now let's talk we what we're going to be doing is we're well you know what i want to do first i want to surprise you i want to surprise everybody out there with a clip just so that you could see who rami strasberg is uh -oh. and here we go. <laughs> That's me. All right, that is one minute. Let's just come back. All right, here we go. I, apparently, we had sound problems. We had no audio from the video clip, even though we heard everything. Well, we will fit. You see what I'm saying, Rami? Sometimes things... <laughs> we enjoyed that clip, didn't we? Sure did. 
All right, well, we'll figure it out maybe for the next show. I don't understand why the sound didn't work. It should maybe have they should have been. Maybe they should have been a big chemist that year. Then they would have heard it. That what was that year? Two thousand and five, two thousand and three. It was around that time. Anyway, let's. Uh, so Rami Strasberg, sax player from the year nineteen ninety seven, joined the band. Um, let's talk a little bit about your upbringing, how you got, because you, you're not like the typical, let's call it Queens Jew, Brooklyn Jew. You grew up out upstate New York, Schenectady, not exactly a bastion of where like there's millions of Jews living. C correct? Correct. And you also grew up in a very musical setting. Tell us uh, about the instruments that you played and where you, um, you know, what you learned and all that stuff. We had a family band and I was, I'm the youngest of five. So everybody played something. There was always music going on in my house. There's uh, my sisters played violins and my father played tuba and piano. And my brother Saul played, who played with you also played um, trumpet and piano. And um, my oldest brother, her, she played drums. So we had band concerts around the, for the shuls and schools and community centers. And um, the only music, Jewish music in upstate New York was, um, was Safam, Schlockrock, and maybe Megama, um, Ruach, and maybe um, Hasidic Song Festival. But fair to say you grew up on the Schlockrock and you grew up on Safam. Those were your two favorite bands. That's right. In Jewish music. What Absolutely. instruments did you play? But you, because you didn't only play saxophone. What did you? Oh right. Um, so I guess I started on piano when I was three or four, and then I played um, uh, ukulele when I was five and six, and then I transferred to guitar for a while, and then I picked up some drums, and then in fifth or sixth grade, my sister Mindy rented a saxophone, and I tried it out, and I really liked, and then I got stuck on sax, and then in high school I worked on saxophone, flute, and clarinet. Sounds like a great song. We have to write a song, Stuck on Sax. Stuck <laughs> on Sax. What a wonderful way. Uh, yeah. So the saxophone, the saxophone was your instrument, but it, yeah. it sounds like it took you a journey to get there. You, 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 it took you a while. Yeah. And, um, and Jewishly, were you affiliated with an Orthodox shul, with a conservative? How did it work? The family grew up at, at the conservative shul, which was one block away from our house. Um, and then my brother and I started walking to the Orthodox shul, which is a mile away, because that way we didn't have to sit next to our, our mom and sisters. So <laughs> we, got, we got some independence and we had friends there. And then we took a liking to the rabbi there, Rabbi Jonathan Horowitz, who was very special to us. And uh, used to t when, he, when he knew that we were getting into Schlockrock, he warned us that uh, he was not the easiest student for your mother. Oh, really? Yeah. My mother taught him. Yeah, yeah, I remember he used to tell us that. Oh, my um, gosh. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, my mother, my mother's taught a bunch of um, schlock rockers, fans who I've met throughout the years, and they always say uh, it was a difficult time for my mom having to try <laughs> to control the class. You know, my mom got better at it, though. And... Uh, um, you know, the, thank God she did a lot of uh, many years and both in yeshiva and in public school teaching. Um, but anyway, and she actually went into English as a second language, which is interesting. That's what she ended up teaching. But I digress. So it's 1997 and you joined the band. And how do you join the band? I basically came to your community. No. And I think the guys told me about you, right? No. I mean, you, you came to my community when I was six and seven and eight and i would come to the shows and love it and my father my father laughs at me that i i asked you as an eight-year-old lenny would it be okay if i record your music because we were my brother and i were playing music at eight and ten and ten and twelve and he was and we wanted to know if we could record it if it was okay with you you said it's okay just don't sell it you're not allowed to sell it right and and so it made me feel very important um and we did we, we i have recordings from when i'm maybe 10 uh, and you're twelve, and my brother's twelve, and we're playing Hine Matov and and Am Yisrael Chai, and we played a bunch of your stuff. So um, you, that's not how I joined the band. I joined the band because I was doing um, national NCSY conventions at the Homoac with uh, Jonathan Rimberg and Jordan Hirsch. Well, oh, I see. And Dave Bogner, Dave Bogner uh, married Cheryl Pomerantz from my shul. So Dave Bogie, who we call Bogie. Remy and Jordan 
were like my were like my coaches, you know, advisors, great guys, and they all knew me and Saul. And then um, A. Y. Weinberg saw Saul and I at um, a national convention. Said, "Hey, why don't you come? Why don't you come play for Chicago Region?" We're like, "Oh my God, are you serious? You're going to fly us to Chicago? We live in New upstate New York. Wait, and you're going to pay us too?" And then he calls me. He calls me in October, says, you know, there's a convention in November and Saturday night we're having schlock rock. And I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And he said, and I think I said, oh, I bet you Lenny needs a sax player. And maybe I spoke to Mike Cohn, who I saw, who I met at, I met at a national HOMOAC convention, national convention at the HOMOAC. I, I met Mike Cohn also, who was yeah. incredible. I sent him a tape of my playing and he sent me back two pages of comments and really, he introduced me to great sax players. I'd never heard of John, Charlie Parker and John Coltrane and Paul Desmond, these incredible sax, you know, the, the sax players of the jazz world. Right. And um, and then I called you up. I said, Len, I'm going to be there anyway. Um, and I'm a big fan. You said, okay, let me check. Who are your references? And I said, Jonathan Remberg and Jordan Hirsch. And you said, okay, this is all by email. You know, no, no, no cell phones and uh, WhatsApp or anything. Right. No we, conversation. We, I, had to, I had to wait a week for you to get back to me from your from your email. And then you said, um, okay, it checks out. You can come and I'm gonna mail you my three most current CDs. So you're up on the material. So you met you you mailed me um greatest hits, stories from the Holy Land, which I love, and Mikdash, yeah. which I love. And my boys listen to Mikdash every night. Cause you because I saw you um a few months ago. You Yesterday gave me a copy. I featured Mikdash, yes. And, Every single night they listen to Mikdash to go to sleep. They love it. My my four year old sings a book of Jibber Dimbra. He says, "I'll put on a book of Jibber Dimbra." <laughs> That's a great um, album. That's a, just a great yeah, album. Yeah, it's a great. Life. They're both incredible. There's so much great yeah. music. And Moshe Shapiro is on there, and Brian Mo Shapiro, Gelfand. Mo Shapiro, who we've got to get on this show. I don't know if I if I'll be able to reach him, I, but I got to get him on the show. He's the schlock rock guitar player 3.0. Because he came after Penny Rosenthal. So we had Yona Lloyd, Penny Rosenthal, and then Mo Shapiro. And Mo Shapiro is just one of the most fabulous musicians. Yeah, it's um, Mo and Dave and there. Mike Roth. And it's like Brian Gelfand. we got to get Mike Roth on also. Mike Roth also put, and, and Roy Weinberger. We're going to get all of them. we got to get everybody on. Once a week, a different guy. And um, so let's fast forward now. 1997, you're in the you you join the band. Now you go off to Israel. You go off to Israel, and you played a concert with me. It was me, you, and Ari Boyanju. And I remember being at the YU is at the Israel Center. But also, it was there that you played on Schlockrock meets the Prophets. Track seven, Recognize the Miracles. You are the sax player on Recognize the Miracles. Yeah, uh, and, and, and a bunch of my friends came and sang backup vocals also on, on Recognize the Miracles. Oh, that was, it was fabulous. First thing is that song is fabulous. Your solo is amazing. Now, did you do any other songs on that album or any other? I, I mean, tell me if you played on anything else. Okay, so I, I played there, and then I, um, I, I there's a picture of me on God Sent Us Email. Right. Oh, just you just froze. You just froze. Wait. You there, Rami? Oh. Okay, Ram, you're going to go back in and out. Come, come out and then go back in so that I could put you on again. I think you, you just froze in the meantime i will tell everybody that this interview is made possible by, by the four corners project that org um www dot four corners project that org please go to the website and donate make a donation for the year small donation medium donation whatever you want uh rami's back rami's i'm back, back. Sorry about that all right that's okay that happens all the time after all it's the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. So, um, okay, so you were saying, so you, you, you were on the cover of God Sent Us Email. You played on Recognize the Miracles. And then um, not against the Shira Yitera, I think. Oh, Shira Yitera, the 38th album that we have put out. You did a lot of sax solos. Mm -hmm. Did you also sing back up? I can't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know either. I think it was just myself and Avraham Burke 
and oh no, Monty Cornfeld. Monty Cornfeld sang back up on that. But that was yes, those are great, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody loves the parodies. We all love the parodies. Achashverosh and you know old time Torah scroll, and we've got a strong desire. But you must check out the original music. The original music is fabulous stuff. I mean, I'm a little bit objective. I wrote it. I wrote it. I recorded it. I arranged it. I'm singing love, on it. I love the original stuff. I I'm a big fan. I know I know almost every sing, almost every original song that you've written, including the Kesher stuff. I loved. I grew up on the Kesher stuff too. I loved it. Yeah, the Kesher stuff. It was everything. That's why I think I I don't know how God allowed me to be in music because you know people always say how do you make it in music and the answer is it's got to be god because it's it's such a crazy field to be in much different than than i i think it's much different than the other careers but maybe i'm wrong anyway i wanted to talk to you now about something that no other band member can say which is that you and i both did an outreach program called encounter in South Africa, right? Yeah, wow. There were, there were actually a number of guys that I recommended to go to South Africa and be the keyboard player at this amazing outreach program called Encounter. And Rami was one of those keyboard players. You went, how many years did you go? Four, I went four summers, I loved it. it, it it's just the most amazing experience. It's amazing. It's amazing. The people are amazing. The food is amazing. Um, I took a lot of time to rest. I also took a lot of time to study for my smicha exams when I was there. Um, Darren Basarabi and Shelly took great care of us. And uh, the whole staff there and Saul Thompson and Gabby Bricker and Ryan Newfield. And I made so many friends, so, so many great people there. The program was amazing. The people are, are outstanding. Such a beautiful but what, community. But what's unbelievable is it is actually seven days in a row of outreach where the kids go for sessions then they come back they have lunch and after lunch and after supper you have what's called a ruach session and a ruach session is they have a songbook and you as the musician pick the songs and try to get them into it spiritually um with with into via music as opposed to via um sessions where they're discussing does god exist uh, or, you know, values, Jewish concepts, right? Yeah, values clarification during the sessions or, yes. or, or text study or history or the importance of the state of Israel. And then we, 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 we rock their world um, emotionally and spiritually. We, we, we get them high on music um, for an hour after lunch and an hour after it's dinner. The mo it's amazing. It's amazing. They think they're at a rock concert. And then the kids get up. And they scream at the top of the lungs, whatever song you're doing. But for me, it was, we believe in Hashem, we believe in the Torah. Or, got to keep on giving. Got to open up your hands. Or, we've got a strong desire. Or, into the yeah. sea. Or, he named yeah. Matov. Yeah. Or, Am Yisrael Chai. Or, Am Yisrael Chai. Or, Am Yisrael Chai. And, Rak Mashiach, Yavi Shalom. Or, whatever. Yeah, they went crazy. They, they would love it. And you didn't, they, it, it, it created a bond. And it's part of the, part of what the, um, the, the, I guess the success of Schlockrock is that that's what the music of Schlockrock did, which is that it, it created a bond between your secular life and the Jewish life and, and got you closer to Judaism. And you played a big part of it when you, when you went to encounter as I did not, I did nine years. You did four years. Did you know I did nine years? Oh wow, nine's a lot. And th and then I did I did I did I did one in Australia with David Shaw and it was uh, fantastic. Oh, you did Australia as well. So I did Australia back in so I did Australia in eighty six and eighty seven and then from eighty eight I went to South Africa nine times until two thousand and five. The last time I've been in South Africa was two thousand and five. You know, the music was wildly successful in South Africa and Australia, but it was also wildly successful in upstate New York in, in the in the Helderberg Mountains at Camp Giva, where these kids maybe found out they were Jewish that week, or they came to this Jewish camp and they didn't know what it was, and they're singing Minyaman on a Friday afternoon. There isn't another Jew for 300 miles, and um, the count the teenagers are also fighting to to hold on to their Jewish identity, and the, the the music the music that you wrote the lyrics and music that you wrote moved people 
from the, the, the four corners of the earth, from the, from the far out, the most far out places, you know, to the Shabbos table is fine, but there's people who didn't know about Shabbos and they, they didn't, they didn't know about Shabbos. So they didn't, they didn't know what, what is Hashem. And they're singing, they're singing Minion Man with tears in their eyes because they're connecting through the, through the words and through the melody to the stories and, and, and the messages. And it, it didn't matter whether it was, okay, you played all 50 states. I didn't play all 50 states, but I, but I played New York and I played the South and I played a little bit in the West and I played Chicago and St. Louis and I did Shabbatones, you know, probably hundreds of Shabbatones where your music moved people for generations. It really, you know, I, I got to tell you, when I hear you talk like this, I say to myself, we must keep going. We have to keep going. It doesn't matter that Schlockrock is 35 years old. It's still timeless. It still works. And we have to just keep going. Although it would be nice if the corona would go away so we could at least do some touring, you know. <laughs> but we don't do touring now. We do everything on the computer, everything with our live stream webcam. My Logitech Brio, which I really highly recommend. I love the sharpness of the picture. And I've converted my office into a, into a television studio. Looks which good. I love. Looks but good. you know, what's really amazing, and the people out there should know, is that you're a rabbi. You're not just, uh, you, you know, you, you, you're a musician, but you're also a rabbi. And you, you were a principal of a day school in Westchester, first in Albany and then in Westchester. Right. And now you've come out to Israel. And um, tell them what you're doing here, because you made Aliyah. You're one of the schlockers. I made that Aliyah. Actually, it this is my Aliyah dream, and I, I sometimes put on that CD when I'm driving to Yushalayim to my Yachad office, and I, I burst out, to be honest, I burst out crying. Wow. I say, I'm, I'm driving from Beit Shemesh, which is a beautiful place, to Yushalayim, and um, people have wanted this for generations. Our people has been longing for this moment, and I, I'm, I get to be the one driving a car to Yushalayim every yeah. day. And, I, and it's, it's my job and I get paid for it. And I love what I do there. I work at, I work for a wonderful organization called Yachad Israel, which is a program under the OU. Um, and um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's an organization that, that provides uh, care and services and support for people with special needs and disabilities. We all we actually all have uh, special needs and disabilities and we also all have abilities. And this is a, a fabulous organization. I met wonderful people. I have an incredible staff that I get to work with. Um, shout out to my friends uh, and my staff, my coworkers, uh, my co-directors there, Yoel Sturman and David Oratz, Avia Atkin and Talia Kirshner. They're just an incredible team of people to work with and we have wonderful Benoche Roots and we've got members that come in and chill with us and we have programs and Shabbatones. We're gonna take a pre-Pesach trip, God willing. Um, Where are you gonna go? Where's your pre-Pesach we're, trip? We're gonna go to the Dead Sea. You wanna come? You bet. Okay. Especially so, if it gets me out of Pesach cleaning. <laughs> we're going to do it two weeks before, uh, before Pesach. It's next week, I think. Next week. Or oh, next, really? Next, it's, the, it's the, I don't have the dates in front of me. It's the 10th or the 12th or the 14th or something like that. Sunday through Tuesday. You'll come. You come one night. All right. We'll, we'll figure it out. You know, because we can't miss Lenny Solomon live. Wow. Lenny Solomon well, you do live. it there from the Dead Sea. You'll do it from the Dead Sea. Oh, I don't know. That's way too technical for me. I don't know how. I mean, it's hard enough. I couldn't even get the, the video to play sound. I don't know why. It works fine here. We're watching it. It's, it sounds great. Anyway, so um, it's really been an amazing thing. First thing is you believe 26 minutes already have gone past or 24 minutes. Uh, it's 24 minutes. I can't I believe it. I want to... Let me do the a couple of paperwork things, which is um, we want to wish a refuah shleima to Yosef Chanoch Ben Shulamit Chaya, Miriam Dodi Bat Chana Yochevet, Eliza Bat Bat Sheva, Yitzchak Ben Yenta, Shmuel Michael Ben Malka, Rivka Fruma Bat Leah Bela, Perel Bat Esther, Shlomo Halevi Ben Esther, Chana Le Leah Bat Malka Sima, Yafa Efrona. Bat Henya Yehudit and Tova Bat Esther. All those people out there, we want to wish you that you have a full recovery from what you're going through. If you want to say some Tehillim for those people, you could sh send me an email at Lenny at fourcornersproject.org. I will send you a list of names. And um, we always do that at every show. Um, so I remember, I just want you to know, 
Rami, we were playing the Israel Center, me and you and uh, Ari Boy and Jew. And at that point, you guys were 18 years old and I was 38. And I said to the audience, him plus him is less than me. <laughs> but the truth is I got 20 years on you, which is really unbelievable. Lenny, but you've been you've been an incredible friend, mentor, coach. Um, you, you were here to welcome me. You you were there to inspire me. And then when I made it when I when I made Aliyah today, um, you were here to catch me. You were here to, to you you were here to catch me and coach me and prep me and support me. And you gave me gigs that year when I was Shana Aleph, and you gave me gigs when I came back Shana Bed, and you gave me gigs when I came. Year after year after year for Yom Kippur at, at, at Yeshivat Kotel and then that which is now Nativari with Ravina, and you you um and we did we did like eight I did the Beit Shemesh concert like eight years in a row that video clip that you showed us from one of the years yes it's it's you, first thing is I love that's my favorite live clip that the band has ever had it's just so the first thing is there's seven guys on stage seven or eight guys on stage uh, I, yeah there's two guitar players there's uh, there's a or maybe one of them is playing bass I can't even remember. Or maybe I'm playing bass, I think. Um, you have Danny Roth on drums, who's fabulous. And uh, the, the three cameras shoot 10,000 people in the audience screaming. And I'm going, well, the streets are going up in Beit Shemesh. I mean, it was just, it's my favorite video clip of, a lot of our live uh, performance, which is why I was so excited to show it. Um, I'm going to put the link in in the description so people can actually click on it. And to hear the sound, because the sound is fantastic too. And there's a great solo, great sax solo by Rami. Um, is there anything that you want to tell the audience? You know, we're living in a, in a little bit of a tough time right now. It's uh, people. What do we do? What do we do, Rob? How do we how do we get through this? Your your message has always been the same. The tunes have changed, the melodies have changed, but the message has always been the same. The message is it's all from Hashem. And you told me that when I was 16 or 17, you said, I, I remember I had people cheering for me and I was excited to be on stage with you. And you said, don't let this get to your head, kid. This is all about Hashem. Hashem put us here. He put us here to bring people closer to Torah and mitzvot. And that's all we're doing. We're playing some music, we're having a great time. And we're, and, and we're, we're, we're it's all about Hashem. It's bringing people closer to God, and and it was it, it was never an ego trip for you, and I tried to make it never an ego trip for me. And you were you were always full of chesed. There was a difference between you and any other performer that I've either played with or or watched as a kid. When when the when the gig was over, you were there to shake hands, to smile, to give people chizuk, to listen to people, to answer the questions. The other performers go right off to the dressing room and drink a coke, or right. or or say, or say let's get the hell out of here because because my job is done. And you were there, like I mean, maybe Shlomo Karlbach um, would, would be. I'm would be, sure. Would be, I'm sure if Shlomo Karlbach yeah, was. But, but I can't. But I can't name another. I can't name another. And I've worked with almost everybody. And you were there to, to smile, to be to be one of the people, to answer questions, to schmooze, to give it to give people a word of chizuk. And uh, well, that's because and, it is the job is really the music is it's the energy. It's all about the energy, you know. You, you, you're throwing energy out to the audience and they're responding. And then they're throwing it back at you. You're creating that rapport. And the thing about the ego stuff is it's true. It's not about, you, if your ego gets in the way of, of the music, then the music loses something. Um, and it, it's, it's really, uh, it is all about making people happy Simcha, and that's one of the things I think we need. We need happiness. We need people to be happy all the time, and and to try to get past this, uh, you know, Corona stuff. And uh, we're gonna do that. Tell me about before we go off the air. We still have a little bit of time. I want you to tell me about your Safam experience because you love Safam. They are they especially their early year stuff. I know you love their early year stuff, which I did too. I was a yeah. big fan of the album Bittersweet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, um, Safam, Joel Sussman, and Robbie Solomon. We 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 came very close with the Sussman family, Camp Yavna, and Joel Joel in particular, and his boys. And um, we we love their their melodies are beautiful and pop and and all sorts of different influences. 
Right. And um, as kids, we, we, we respected musicians. We wanted to see a group of musicians on the stage. We didn't want to see one guy with a microphone with a backup band that was hiding or not or non-existent in the concert. And you were a band and Safam was a band. We didn't, the, the Oye Oye singers were, were beautiful, have beautiful voices, but they weren't musicians. They didn't compose anything. They didn't write anything. They didn't, they didn't play any instruments. And that's, that wasn't to be admired by a kid who wanted to if, play instruments. If I would say for me, I, well, I was I was influenced by when I when I was 15, 16, the Ruach album, the Jep, Cole Salonica. But then when I got older, a little bit older, I got into Safan Bittersweet. I love Judea. I don't know if you've ever heard that Judea album. But these are must albums for those Jewish music followers. Then when Mark Skyer made his Kabbalah album, I love those two albums, Kabbalah One and Kabbalah Two, and uh, really fabulous, fabulous listening jewish rock and roll jewish music both just driving stuff stuff that that got right to your core to it went to you and um i i love all that stuff today's day and age i'm not it, it it's i i don't know maybe i haven't given it a chance it's hard for me to get into the newer material um although although we're getting uh, certain songs are are, are really getting, like, if you listen to Yonatan Razel, you ever listen to Yonatan Razel? Love he has it. got a song called, called Ashira Lashem, which starts off, Va'ani b'chastecha batachti, yageli bi It's unbelievable. That song is unbelievable. I hear it, I, I hear spirituality, I hear soulfulness. Yonatan Razel, fabulous fabulous musician for those of you out there that want to get into jewish music but of course that's first thing you got to do is listen to all 39 uh schlock rock albums that's your first assignment <laughs> so rami i just want to say that we it was great having you i want to um say that i i hope to play with you soon we have to do a show i was hoping that for our 100th show mike roth is checking in by the way on the chat Whoa. mike roth is checking on the chat Saying that looks like Rami, and it is, Mike. Mike, we're going to get you on in a couple of weeks. Uh, Judy Hertzfeld says she loves Safam, the song or the album, Brighter Day. Sure, it's an album, so, yeah. Yeah, it's an album, right? I, I remember that album, too. Um, so the thing is, I look forward to playing with you. I was hoping for our 100th show, we would go back in the studio like we did. But we're, we're working on it. We're going to work on it, it, and we'll see what happens. I'll well, tell maybe, Jeff. You know, yeah, I got to tell Jeff and Danielle Aloni where we recorded it. But um, I want to thank you for coming into the studio for Lenny Solomon Live Show 90. Everybody out there, remember, show is sponsored by www.fourcornersproject.org and by the Kosher Cakery. Kosher Cakery making great cakes. And all you got to do is order it online and have it delivered to people who live in Israel. Two sponsors for today's show. Um... And we will talk more about the kosher cakery tomorrow when I do a proper commercial. Anyway, so uh, it's great having you. And everybody out there, tomorrow night, show at 11 p.m. Israel time, 4 p.m. New York time. And we will be featuring another album. I'm not telling you which one it's going to be, but we will be featuring another album like we did yesterday with Mikdash. And as we get closer to Pesach, three weeks and three days left until Seder. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's supposed to make us all nervous. But uh, I, I got to tell the audience about all the different shows. I used to go from hotel to hotel playing concerts, you know, in Florida, Arizona, uh, California. But those days are gone, at least for this year, at least for this year. Um, Everybody out there, have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you, Rami Strasberg, for joining Thank us in so studio. Much. Lenny Solomon, live show number 90. We'll see you tomorrow. Keep on schlocking.